afternoon. So I'm going to read some of them out and direct them to the panel, but please feel free uh, to join in and get involved. Um, so the first question we have is from a lady called Rose, um, who's asked about how many people uh, have tested more than tested positive more than once. Um, and Angela, I wonder if you might just say something about that and what we're learning about people's immunity to COVID uh, and how we're sort of managing that. Yes. So um, as 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 you've said, we, we're doing lots of research on COVID. So it's a new disease. We don't quite know how it works with our immune system. So. Um, there's no absolute evidence as yet to say that says that people can get COVID twice um, and they're not quite sure on whether that if somebody has tested positive once um, and then it goes on to be positive, whether that's just residual virus left in the system. So it, it's, 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 it's not possible to say as yet that people can get COVID twice. OK, brilliant. And obviously we are. Uh, doing a rolling programme of testing as well, particularly for uh, our vulnerable people in care homes. Uh, that includes residents and people uh, who live there as well. Um, and Angela, um, just briefly, may you say something to us about, I guess, how things uh, are for you in the hospital at the moment in terms of the challenges that you're facing? Uh, and is there any kind of message tonight that you'd like to give uh, to Greenwich residents in particular? Um, thanks, Danny. Yes, so um, we have seen an increase in... Um, our admissions uh, from people who are testing positive for COVID. However, it's not to the levels that we saw in March and April. Um, in particular, I'd, I'd say for our intensive care uh, beds. So we haven't seen um, you know, that sort of demand for intensive care beds as yet. Um, the rest of London seems to be um, experiencing a higher demand than we are in South East London at the moment. And so we think it's really a time issue rather than the fact that we're doing anything different. So we do expect to see um, you know, an increase in, in our admissions. Having said that, we are managing very well. And um, what I would say is that there are no plans to stop any operations or outpatient appointments. Um, and that really, I'd, I'd, I'd ask you all to carry on. We are making the hospital or the hospitals and any outpatient clinics as safe as we possibly can for you. Um, and so really, please do 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 attend. Um, or if you've got any questions, phone us and we can we can help you with that. OK, thank you so much, Angela. Just a couple of points to emphasise to people. Um, I know from very personal experience, having uh, had a shoulder uh, surgery that had to be fixed, um, just how uh, safe the hospital actually is in terms of the procedures. And I can't thank LGT enough for uh, helping me out. And it really is absolutely essential that if you are asked to go to the hospital uh, and certainly even, you know, primary care, our GP surgeries are open for business. You know, do not wait. Please, you know, obviously take all the sensible precautions, follow the rules. But if you need help, as Angela says, people are there uh, ready to help you. Uh, so please do get involved in that. But I would say to people, obviously, tonight, although demand isn't going up, uh, we looked at the figures today for Lewis and Greenwich, and actually there's 15 people uh, who are now in intensive care. And I think that's really worth bearing in mind, actually, that tonight, while we're having that call, that those numbers uh, are rising. Uh, you know, that number is bigger than it was last week. And, and certainly uh, that threat uh, of the virus is still very much here. Uh, so please uh, bear that uh, in mind. Now, our second question uh, is about schools. So I'm going to go to Councillor Morrow for this one, who's our cabinet member uh, for children's services. Uh, so Matt, we've got a question here uh, that says, in effect, are our schools safe and should kids be back at school? So I wonder if you might say something about that and also the work that you've been doing uh, with heads. Well, the, the, thank you, Danny. The, the short answer is yes, our schools are safe and they will continue to be open. Um, during, as it were, the first lockdown, quite a lot of our schools had very few pupils attending. They were mostly all open throughout um, because there, there were children from essential workers and those deemed vulnerable attending. But this time we expect um, many more children to attend and that there is no reason to keep your child off school unless you have a particular worry about a health issue or a particular vulnerability. So um, children don't... Um, younger children don't experience the virus in the same way as, as older children and adults, so they often have very mild symptoms, if symptoms at all. Um, older children do get 
similar symptoms to adults, they get the, the flu-like symptoms. Um, I do have some stats about the number of positive uh, cases we've had in our borough. Um, so as of Monday, um, we had 67 pupils um, with a confirmed infection. Um, and because of that, we had 1,128 who were isolating. So typically if, a, if one child in a class um, has a high temperature, that child goes home, but so does the rest of the class, just to be sure that nobody else has the virus. And that 1,128 is out of 35,000 um, pupils across the borough. So the, the number isolating is, is about 3%. So actually, our schools have been brilliant at managing this because this is a really new situation for everyone, but they've set up bubbles. Um, and if, there is, if a child does have symptoms, the child can go home and so can the rest of the bubble. And that, that keeps everyone safe and, and restricts the, the, um, the infection rate. So, you know, as, as everything in the world, nothing is ever 100% safe, but children are at very low, if any, risk. Um, and I'm, I'm very pleased that the schools will be staying open throughout and that most children will be, will be attending because I, I think it's very good for kids to be in school. When, if you're thinking about not having children in school, there's, there's risks for that as well. Children miss their routine, they miss their teacher and their friends, and they miss their learning. So, if, you know, even if people were keeping their kids off school, that's, that's not a solution to the, the problem. It's just a different risk. Thank you, Matt. We've also got a question that has come in here from uh, Chevy11, uh, which I assume uh, is a handle, uh, who asks what um, a second wave means for schools. And just to emphasise, I think, what Matt said there, actually schools are remaining open uh, and we're working with all schools to make sure that the, not only the pupils, but the teachers are safe uh, in, to do that. Uh, we're also in uh, a whole range of conversations. You'll see uh, what's happening in Liverpool at the moment around population testing. Uh, and we're trying to make the case to government that actually we would like some fast, rapid access testing, particularly for teachers that we could run uh, in the borough so that teachers and all teaching staff um, could be uh, more regularly tested, uh, which I think would be reassuring uh, for them as a workforce in particular, uh, but also uh, for our parents and carers. So hopefully some more information uh, on that uh, soon. Um, now, I've got a question here from Paul, um, who asks about um, a second wave and the restrictions and whether or not it will be the same as the first time. And I want to bring in Ellen here, who represents uh, the Chamber of Commerce and works with businesses across Greenwich. Yep. In terms of, I suppose, um, what this new, the new lockdown means for businesses, um, could you give us a sense of that, what people should expect? And also, if you are in a business and you're really worried about this, what can people do to get help? Right, I think um, we've been asked businesses, we've all been asked to work um, from home if we can. And I think, but people will be extending that. Actually, as, as a chamber, we have very limited um, numbers of employees and we're actually going to remain open on a, um, you know, three days a week, basically. So there will be someone there. Um, what can people expect? Um, I think that there are, I think a lot of businesses will be quite confused because there was the furlough was coming to an end at the end of, uh, at the end of October and that's now been extended. So I think that some businesses would have been about to make people redundant um, and they won't be basically. I think it's, um, I think, I think businesses are, are prepared for the new lockdown. I think there's a lot of, I've been on a, a meeting with the London Chamber of Commerce earlier, and there's a lot of um, speculation about, will we go back on the 2nd of December, um, you know, or will it be longer? But I think, again, that's just speculation. I think we just have to live with things. Mm. And obviously, I think just to say the thing that is a real worry for people this time is obviously having been through one lockdown, I think we can all say that all of our mental health has suffered this yes. year. Yes. And we've all been through uh, a lot, you know, in terms of that collective grief of, you know, yes. losing people, losing friends, losing, you know, yeah. take for granted. So please make sure uh, that if you are suffering and you're experiencing issues in relation to your mental health, that you do reach out to the services that are available because yes. it's as important as your physical yes. health. 
And Danny, may I just add, in our, um, we have a chamber, we have a weekly newsletter. We are um, enca we're encouraging all businesses to take care, you know, well-being in the workplace, and that's physical and your mental health. And just so Angela knows that we're also promoting um, in, 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 uh, at all times, you know, people, especially we're promoting flu jabs and keep your appointments. So that, that's constant. And I don't know if there's going to be something, but I do remember there was a very good, I think it was the Mayor of London, there was a very good little video about mental health in the first lockdown. Do you remember that, Danny? Mm -hmm. And I don't, I hope that will be coming back. And in fact, I will ask that question tomorrow because that was a very reassuring, <coughs> sorry, something fell over then. Um, it, it, it was very reassuring to everyone. I found it very, very good because it covered people of all ages. So I will undertake to find if that's coming back. And if anyone from the comms team who's supporting on this call could maybe find that and post it, that would be helpful. Now I want to come to uh, Miranda uh, and to Angela really for this joint question. Is that obviously in uh, wave one in particular, uh, we saw that many of our BAME residents, people from black and minority ethnic communities, were really disproportionately affected uh, in many ways as a result of COVID. Uh, and I guess I just want some kind of reassurance that in a sense, what, what we're doing both as a council and as the hospital trust in particular to protect staff and residents. Um, and, and are we clear about what those risks are? Uh, Miranda, do you want to kick us off? I think, I think we are clear as to what the risks are. It's certain that all the evidence um, tells us that people and our residents from our BAME communities were at much higher risk because of the forward facing roles that they have, um, they undertake as a, as a community. Um, so in terms of um, the, uh, what we're doing to support, I think we've been very open as a, as a council to, to, be, to hear the concerns of all of our employees and our residents. Um, and we are, have, have really pushed, like Angela said, in our, our flu jabs as well to um, keep people well. Although clearly our, our vaccination for flu does not, is, is not a COVID vaccination, just to, to clear that up, sorry for any uh, confusion. And, but we really have, we have recognised those risks that our, our BAME residents and our, our BAME staff and officers are, um, are facing at this time. Angela, would you like to have this one? I would. Thank you very much. Um, so, if I if I start with um, with our our um, our patients, uh, so if you're coming to uh, an, our emergency departments, etc., so we we have uh, really separated out the pathway. So, if if you're if you're query COVID or COVID positive, you'll go to one, e one end. And if you're not, if you've got different symptoms, you'll, you'll go to another. So we're really trying to keep those pathways separate. If you're coming for um, any kind of elective, uh, so surgery or, or a diagnostic procedure, then a risk assessment will be undertaken before you have it. So uh, we can really work out, and, and we know we know the things that increase the risk um, if, if you get COVID. So, so underlying conditions, as Danny said, ethnicity, um, and also um, uh, sort of body mass index. So um, your, your weight is also taken into consideration and an individual risk assessment based on all of those things really. Um, and for our staff, we've done um, exactly the same. So every member of our staff uh, has uh, been invited to undertake a, a risk assessment, an individual risk assessment with their line manager. And um, we had over 95% of our staff um, have had that risk assessment. And based on that will depend on where they work in the trust, whether they do patient facing duties or whether they're um, supporting us, um, you know, perhaps virtually or, or something like that. So yeah, we're taking it very seriously. Thank you very much, Sandra. And also just to kind of reassure any rural village residents who are working, we are continuing to make as many representations and lobbies that we can to the government uh, about this horrendous issue, because I think that what we've all seen this year is that COVID 
has exacerbated the inequalities that already existed in London, actually. Uh, and certainly, if you live in parts of London which are poorer, uh, where there are more black residents, what we saw there was the people massively disproportionately affected. And that includes, you know, places, for example, in Greenwich, and, and we've seen Thamesmead, Hampstead having particular issues. Just to reassure people as well, myself and Matt visited um, the new Plumstead uh, testing centre, uh, which is actually on uh, just off Plumstead High Street on Avery Street. Uh, and the thing I was really reassured about there was that actually they can provide services in a whole range of different community languages. Um, so actually, if English isn't your first language, that's absolutely no barrier to getting a COVID test. Uh, and just as a point of reassurance to residents as well, whilst obviously we absolutely encourage everyone to book through the national uh, and some of those issues uh, about people being sent to Dundee have finally it looks like been resolved, fingers crossed. Uh, we do have the capacity in those walk-in centres for you to turn up if you have symptoms and if you are a key worker and access a test. Uh, and we really want to push that message to make sure that people are making the most uh, of those facilities. So we've currently got one in Plumstead, we've got another one in Eltham in Avery Hill, uh, and we're just about to open another uh, community testing centre down in uh, the centre of Greenwich uh, in Devonport House. So please do uh, make the most of those and share that knowledge throughout uh, our communities. Now I'm just going to open up uh, and go to uh, another uh, question. Um, so we've got a question here um, really um, about information um, and this is from um, Green Blue, someone who says basically what do I need to know as someone who lives in Plumstead and obviously there is so much information uh, most of which is very confusing uh, to kind of you know understand and comprehend and certainly um, some of the charts that we see at those number 10 press conferences uh, make you reach for an anodine shit soon after really to uh, to, to just take the uh, take the weight off. What I would say to people is, from a Greenwich perspective, you can sign up to our residence bulletin, which currently we're sending out three times a week. Um, our comms team will share the link uh, in the chat function. Uh, that's information from us direct from the council, which gives you the specific Greenwich messages that we really want you to hear. So, for example, changes that we're having to make to our services, uh, more information about where you can get business support, details on our testing. So please do uh, try uh, and make the most uh, of that. Okay, we've got another question here um, from some, someone called Wasby. He says, is there anything people can do other than online? I'm getting tired of doing everything virtually. Helen, how are you feeling about the prospect of another Zoom quiz? Well, I love, I love quizzes and um, I've been on a Zoom quiz. So um, I'm up for that sort of thing. I think we've all adjusted actually to using um, different platforms. So yeah. okay, I so do look forward to their having real yeah. meetings. Yeah, a positive perspective there from Helen on our new virtual world. Matt, I think you may have something to say about this. Yeah, I um, I love the new technology, but I, I do get zoomed out, I think is, is the phrase. I, I love, uh, sometimes I go to cabinet meetings and I love to see all my colleagues on Zoom. And then after about two hours, I'm thinking, you know, I, I really need to stop being at this meeting. It's a different thing from face-to-face -face meetings. Sometimes you don't get the the, the, like, the small talk and the, the social interaction in a break, you know, like, so I think, I think doing everything online does get a bit stressful after a while. I, I personally, I, I saw, um, I saw the Live Well Greenwich Look After You page a couple of days ago, which I think our comms team have got a link to, uh, which I thought was excellent because it, it gives you both, um, it gives you sort of top tips about, you know, looking after yourself during, while you're doing all these you know, endless Zoom calls and stuff about routine and about exercise and stuff. And it also gives you who to contact if, if you're not coping. And, you know, it is possible. Some, sometimes we don't feel like we're coping and, and no one should feel they can't ask for help. Um, so there's, there's a lot of really good information on there. And if, if anyone wants to have a look, I, I think you'd find it useful. Brilliant. Miranda, do you have any top tips on how to look after yourself during the lockdown and avoid Zoom fatigue? Um, I'm really, really pleased, actually, that it, if I can find something to be pleased about in lockdown round two, that children 
haven't been included in the meeting another grown up, um, which means that parents can take their children to the park and meet another grown up for that adult conversation, which I think is really important. I know having three under 10s is um, it's tricky and it's hard. And I'm, I'm so, so pleased that we will do all we can to keep our schools open because um, I, have, I have two seven year olds and their their schooling is, is a really big part of their life. Um, so Zoom, uh, but Zoom fatigue, I think is, is a real thing. I must admit, I get very bored of seeing my office from all angles and um, it just sort of, and being at home as well all the time isn't, isn't healthy. So I think it's really important just to get outside. I know it's getting colder, um, but you know, as autumn turns to winter and the days get hopefully crisper, but drier and colder, we can certainly still enjoy our parks and open spaces. And I think that is one thing that we are really, really lucky with in, in this borough is just the quality of our parks um, um, that we can access. So I really would encourage everybody to wrap up warm and get outside because our mental health is key to getting us through this. And I know that as, as, as Matt has just said, um, I would say we have all struggled at times um, with that um, and support each other, check in on your friends, phone someone, even if you think they're okay, if they're the one that's always okay, give them a call because it might be that they're not and that they might not have spoken to anyone recently. So pick up the phone to the people you haven't spoken to recently. Angela, I guess from a health perspective, um, COVID, is, apart from being a challenge in terms of managing the pandemic, you've also had the huge task of trying to move more services virtually online. And I just wondered what your initial feedback was from patients who perhaps are not coming into the hospital in the same way that they were, how they're experiencing these new uh, services and whether or not they're here to stay for the future. Yeah, um, so I suppose um, there, there have been some sort of unintended uh, benefits actually of, 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 of the pandemic. Hard to imagine, I know, but um, so we've been trying to get virtual um, access to doctors and clinicians in general for years really and actually for all sorts of reasons haven't been able to to get it going and so um the, you know the pandemic really pushed pushed uh, the implementation of, of virtual appointments um and, and what i'll say in the main that people are really happy with having access or virtual access to um their appointments but that's not the same for everybody not everybody has the technology not everybody has um I don't know the sort of wherewithal to to be able to connect so it you know just to say that we do still offer face-to-face -face appointments and I think particularly for um, some of our more vulnerable populations um, and and people that uh, it, it's really important for them to see somebody face to face so so just to say that that is still available it is an option for everybody we are in trying to uh, do as much virtually as we can uh, for obvious reasons, you know, uh, as in you know, keeping people safe, but but actually the option for face-to-face uh, -face is still there. Thank you. And there's a question actually that came in from uh, Pamela Morgan, who'd asked about um, appointments, pre-booked appointments taking place. And obviously if you've been invited to the hospital, Pamela, for uh, an appointment, uh, I think you get a phone call normally uh, the day before or just before just to check you don't have any uh, COVID symptoms or any other issues. So uh, please make sure that you respond to that and then obviously uh, continue to access the service uh, as you usually would, albeit in a COVID secure way. So uh, masks on when you go uh, anywhere uh, into the hospital uh, and obviously uh, there is hand sanitizer uh, around, uh, but nothing beats a good old wash of the hands in uh, one of the uh, luxury toilets up at the QE really before you get in and out to uh, make sure that you're uh, keeping the hand space uh, space system going. Now, Miranda, we've got a question in here, but I don't know uh, who it's from actually, who's asked about contact testing uh, and tracing. And um, so is the council gonna become more involved in testing, sorry, in tracing uh, residents who may have COVID and identifying those contacts who uh, will then need to self-isolate? Sorry, I was losing my mute, unmute button there. I should know by now. Um, so, bear with, I've, 
Do you want to hang on to? Do you want to come back to him, that question? Yes, please. Is that okay? All right, fine. Um, Helen, can I just go to uh, you quickly for um, a sort of related question? Really, is yeah. what work have Greenwich businesses um, like now who are all going to be uh, locked down really been doing to become uh, COVID secure? Um, and I guess looking forward and hopefully to better days, we're all hoping uh, that the second of December uh, will see restrictions lifted. Uh, and perhaps you know some of our hospitality uh, venues in particular open. Um, so what work has been going on? And is there anyone, uh, I guess, that you'd really like to say uh, a particular well done to and highlight the massive work that's gone on uh, to, to help make these changes? What I have, this is going back a little way, I have been so impressed with the businesses that diversified originally. And I can think of two Greenwich-based businesses um, who supplied the hospitality trade, um, Drury Tea and Coffee being one, they're all chamber members, and Paul Rhodes Bakery, because they supplied the hospitality trade and overnight they both lost 80% of their business and they diversified into um, like the baker, you know, he, he was, uh, and the wonderful um, food boxes that were provided and I can't remember Danny you're going to tell me you'll be able to remind me how many were distributed in Greenwich thousands massive massive I should have had the figures from GCDA in front of me um but how they actually changed their business models and someone like both of them have gone back to supplying albeit the limited hospitality trade um, but they have they're all doing home deliveries and stuff and I've been very impressed and I think I'd like to give a plug also for how localism we know that that um, a lot of um, I think there's one particular greengrocer somewhere in the borough that he's probably we probably can't go anywhere at the moment because you can't go on holiday but he's done so well you know because we are all shopping locally so that's the plug to um, people that change their business models. And I'd also, I'd like to say that I think people are, um, we're all very conscious and we're wearing our masks. And although I, I just said our chamber office will be open three days a week, and that's because of it actually suits um, the staff because they don't really want to be at home, but they have to adhere to the, to the COVID rules, you know, and they're wearing masks in the office. Not when you're having a cup of tea, but you know that that they that's you know what they're doing so that's my comment but i think people are are geared up to it um yeah and i i think i have been so impressed with basically change of business models and how uh, home deliveries and that will continue okay but there, but there we go that's what Thank i feel uh, miranda then can you uh, come come back come back to you on testing and oh, sorry, on tracing Yes, and apologies, complete brain brain freeze there. Um, yes, so the council has um, has trained more than twenty officers to begin undertaking contact. I can't say it. Contact tracing um, as of tomorrow, if tomorrow is the fifth. Um, and we we've, we've done that because we you know we have the knowledge and understanding of of the borough and our residents, and we can have those um, conversations quickly with people. Um, who the who the national service haven't been able to contact we get past the details after 24 hours of the national service trying and then they get they get passed to us um at the moment but yes so we have we have trained 20 staff hopefully more um and yeah just undertake the the contact tracing as of tomorrow okay thank you uh, very much uh now matt i guess in terms of um i suppose children and, and I guess families who are um, concerned about bubbles in particular. Um, I know you mentioned that we have, I think, over a thousand children who are in isolation. Um, who, is a, who is a bubble? Is it the same in each school or are people uh, doing it differently? And, and actually, if you're a parent or a carer, um, should you be uh, overly alarmed if you have one case of COVID uh, in a school and what that means for your children? Um, I wouldn't be overly alarmed. Um, a bubble is basically when your child goes to school, all the people they're sitting with. So usually it's their class. Um, and if one child in the class has, you know, a temperature or a cough, then that child might have 
coronavirus and all the other children in that class are considered to be part of their bubble. So they would go home to isolate as well, just as a precaution. Um, as, as you can see from the, um, the, the positive tests, it's 67 pupils, but there's over a thousand have been isolated because they're part of a bubble. So it's actually um, where schools are erring on the side of caution. And if your child is asked to, to come home, it, it probably means they're at a very low risk. So I'd, I wouldn't be too worried about that. Um, each school is doing it slightly differently. Um, some schools, it, it's based on the layout of the building. So in, in a few cases, um, there's been, for example, a teacher who's tested positive and, and they've been in front of three or four classes. So you've had, you've had a whole load of, you'd have had like, you know, 90 children all from, from one case. But in, in the most cases, it, it's the class that the child is in. Um, and although it's obviously a disruption to come home and isolate, it, it's, it shouldn't be too much of a worry. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we've got a couple of questions here as well about uh, face masks. And uh, this, they don't say who this is from, I'm afraid. So, um, oh, sorry, it's from a lady called Penelope. Hello, Penelope. Um, will the council be supplying uh, residents with free face masks? Um, I'm afraid not. Um, obviously, um, one of the massive challenges that we face um, during COVID uh, is the financial challenge and our services have been hugely hit by the cost of COVID. Um, and certainly uh, across uh, London, uh, although we've had some support uh, from the government for which we're all grateful as London councils, uh, the fact is that we haven't had enough money uh, to cover all of the costs that have been going out. Uh, and whilst I'd love to be able to offer uh, everyone uh, a free face mask, it's just simply uh, not possible. Um, obviously, you know, we continue to uh, make the case to say that you know, these are the costs, of very real costs of COVID uh, that we're having to pick up from, you know, changing uh, our offices, from, you know, supporting our staff, making sure uh, everyone has got proper PPE, uh, which I've done a lot of work around. Um, but the cost of COVID, uh, certainly to local councils, has been astronomical. Uh, but you can uh, absolutely make your own mask. Uh, now, I am not uh, a sewer, uh, I'm afraid, uh, but there are loads of um, good ideas online about how to uh, make your own uh, face covering. Uh, and certainly um, within the next four weeks and not having uh, much else to do, uh, we're all going to be looking for new entertainment. So that could be... Uh, a good uh, option. Now, there's another question also, uh, which is coming from uh, Rob uh, about elderly neighbours um, and what can we do to support um, people uh, who perhaps can't get out and engage with other people. Um, before I bring Miranda in to answer that question, I just want to give a, a plug to our local hospice, Greenwich Bexley Hospice, who do uh, incredible work. They have a good neighbour scheme, uh, which is really worth uh, looking at and hopefully our comms team again will share those details uh, for me because uh, it is one of those great examples of Greenwich organisations going uh, above and beyond uh, to support our community. Uh, Miranda, uh, what can we do if you have an elderly neighbour, how could you support them? Well, if you if you want to support them yourself, I think offering to do any, any shopping, checking in on your neighbours, seeing if there any prescriptions picking up um, or you know things like that the everyday support that they might need um ask if they need anyone contacting on their behalf maybe offering to um to assist them if you can um hard because you can't go in into people's houses but assisting with with technology if that is possible um but also our our community hub is is running um and I will ask the, our, our, our comms officers to put the telephone number and the details um, up uh, so they're available. They are available, but just so that they can be refreshed and they can offer um, advice and support and assist with tasks that may be needed and also connect residents with other services that they that they might be in need of as well. Thank you very much, Miranda. Um, just to, um, we've got a question here actually from um, a man called Paul Malone, who's asking, uh, about uh, lockdown uh, and the data uh, which is being used to justify this. Now, I guess, Paul, I would say thanks obviously for your question. Uh, and whilst any uh, number can be analysed in perhaps different ways, the simple fact is this in London. If you considered coronavirus to be an arrow, the arrow is pointing in the wrong direction. 
whatever way you cut the cake, infections are going up. That is a fact. We, as Angela said, we're not quite seeing the same pressure that we have seen in wave two, and we're all very grateful to that. But unless people comply with these rules, that will be where we're at very quickly. And we've already seen, um, you know, as we just discussed earlier on, an increased number of people in the hospital. We've seen an increased number of people in intensive care. And it's absolutely vital uh, that we bear this uh, in mind. And I think it was really stark a couple of, uh, I think it was last week, so times kind of all morphed into uh, one big thing. And when we were looking at the figures around the infection rates per 100,000, uh, Greenwich for about five or six days actually was hovering around 70 to the 73 mark. Uh, quite suddenly, we were suddenly at 92, uh, and then almost within 24 hours, we were at 107. Uh, and actually, I think what that demonstrated very clearly is that all London boroughs had tipped over that marker, which has been used to kind of take people uh, into tier two. Clearly, we don't want uh, these restrictions to be uh, in place, uh, but when you have got the infection rising, uh, which it is, when you've got the infection spreading, which it is, it's absolutely essential that urgent action is taken by all of us to bring that down. Um, a great question here from Annie. Uh, Annie's asked about how local services uh, get listed within the hub. Uh, Annie, I'm not sure what services uh, you're providing, but actually loads of people have been fantastic at helping us with our uh, volunteer efforts. So by all means, uh, drop us an email uh, and we'll connect you into uh, our hub. Um, we're also going to have uh, a couple of community hub ambassadors here uh, in our council offices. Uh, moving forward now as we get into the new restrictions from tomorrow. Just want to acknowledge that obviously it's a really hard time for people. Uh, and whilst we're all asking people to stay at home and do the right thing, lots of challenges coming through in people's lives, people who are losing jobs, you know, people have been bereaved and all of that places huge stress uh, on people. So the council, uh, if you like, our front door uh, absolutely remains open for emergency uh, appointments. Um, we need people to be responsible. Uh, I'm hoping many more people are watching this uh, than out shopping for 500 toilet bowls at this point in time that frankly they don't need. Uh, and actually, you know, we all need to uh, try and keep as calm uh, as possible uh, and support each other. So please make sure if you do, uh, I guess, need, an, uh, need support, our community fund uh, is and remains there uh, moving forward. So that will be a big uh, lifeline uh, of support. Um, a comment from Rita um, here about any updates on the lockdown rules in light of the announcement. Rita, I'm not sure uh, what announcement you're referring to, so uh, do let us know um, and we'll just try and pick that up. Um, now, I want to go back um, just quickly, uh, if I can, to uh, Angela. Um, Angela, obviously, we've talked a lot, um, I guess, about you know, kind of COVID and how that is being managed uh, in hospital. Um, and actually, over the next four weeks, we're going to be asking people to stay at home, you know, to work from home where possible uh, and have reduced social contact. Is there any kind of top tips that you would be giving to Greenwich residents to try and stay as healthy as possible in these current crazy times? Uh, yes, I think if you... Um try and eat healthily, try and exercise as much as you can. Um, and as, as we've, uh, you know, others have said, really, a little bit of outside contact as much as you can, but, but also do seek help. So if you feel unwell, don't leave it for days on end. What we saw in the first wave was that people felt that they couldn't come to hospital or they couldn't contact their GP. Um, you know, we, we do have access to a lot of health advice either online or by phone. So there's the 111 service, um, which actually has increased quite significantly uh, in terms of you know, the call handlers, et cetera. So if you phone, your call will be answered. So um, also don't run out of medication, you know, make sure you've got your medication. And I know that pharmacies are uh, putting on extra sort of um, home deliveries, et cetera. So, um, and, and just to say that our community services, so our district nurses, et cetera, are carrying on as normal. 
Great, thank you. Uh, I've got a comment here actually from uh, Mary. Now you've mentioned phones. Uh, who said, are the council uh, going to answer their phones? Well, Mary, I can assure you that we do answer our phones uh, all day, every day. And actually our switchboard is open 365 days a year, including Christmas Day. But you won't be surprised to know that the council, like every other organisation, is suffering as many issues in relation to this pandemic as other people. So, of course, we've got staff who've had COVID. We've got staff who are self-isolating. We've got staff who are having to work uh, remotely. Uh, but what you can do uh, is you can do loads of stuff uh, online, uh, actually, in terms of you know, access to uh, many of our services. Um, so please, uh, wherever possible, uh, please try and do that uh, to kind of reduce demand uh, on our services and make it easier um, to access um, so that people can get through more quickly. And apologies if you have been holding uh, for a long time. It's just um, one of the challenges uh, that we've got at the moment. Now we're drawing to a close um, and obviously it is uh, just under uh, six hours, just over six hours now until uh, these new uh, national lockdown restrictions will kick in. I just thought we'd end on a, a sort of happier note as we kind of go into, um, I guess, you know, another period where we're all going to be uh, suffering, we're all going to be having to make sacrifices um, in order to really, um, I guess, look to the future because there will be brighter days coming. Uh, we don't know when they are, but they definitely will come. Um, so we need to have, have faith, I think, in that. And I just wondered, um, Helen um, will then go round as a question, um, what is the one thing you're most looking forward to doing when things get back to normal? And we'll start with Helen. Oh, um, when think what real normal you mean, normal, normal. Yeah, I mean, um, Sorry, I'm looking forward to, you know, we're really good friends when you see someone and you, you haven't seen them for a while and you can just hug them. And all we can do now is a virtual hug, but I think nice hugs. Okay, amazing. All right, we'll go to Matt. I think I'm looking forward to going to the cinema most. Um, I do like horror films. Um, and I have been known to shriek at the really scary bits, um, but any, anything not too scary. But I, I really miss the experience of just going out and, and sitting with people and, and coming home and chatting about it. So I'm looking forward to that when this is all over. Amazing. Miranda? Um, just being with people, being with friends. Um, and I really miss my mum and dad and my sister. They live... Um, miles away my sister lives in Wales so she's undertaken a whole different version of lockdown to us um but I have I know I've, I've seen my sister for a couple of days this year and my mum and dad for not much longer and and um I just I just want to spend time with my friends and my family okay Angela so for me I mean I suppose as as, as a nurse some something that always gives me great pleasure is to be able to Sit, sit down and have a conversation with a patient. And, and I found it really difficult wearing gloves, wearing a mask the whole time, but you can't, you don't get that human contact as, as Helen said. So that for me, but I guess, and also on a personal note, live music. So I can't wait for, to be able to go see a band. <laughs> Amazing. I was thinking about that as well, actually, because I had a couple of concerts that were cancelled and it is the, uh, the thing where you kind of really miss that excitement of when the lights go down and that person's there and everyone's kind of you know absolutely enjoying that experience together so I think I'm with uh, Anza on that one and also I guess actually really looking forward to getting back into you know kind of central London uh, and actually you know kind of having that experience of the hustle and bustle of life you know maybe going to the theatre you know going into seeing some of our amazing museums getting the uh, the clipper up and down, which I always think is a great uh, Greenwich thing to do, actually, uh, you know, particularly uh, to experience, you know, kind of, I guess, London as, as we kind of love and know it. Um, we just have one final question which came in, which I will uh, answer directly, because um, uh, I think it's from uh, Joel Rogan, who's asked about uh, encouraging school children uh, to wear uh, masks on buses because they're not. Uh, well, Joel, I'm afraid that may be your experience, but it's not a shared one because I've been emailing loads of Greenwich heads uh, that I see on my sort of bus journeys around the borough 
um, particularly um, a particular sort of shout out really to Woolwich Poly, uh, to the Harris Academy, uh, to John Roan, uh, whose pupils uh, I've seen uh, without exception actually kind of on buses uh, wearing masks. And if I'm completely honest, uh, more of the buses I've been on, uh, the issue's been with adults uh, who seem convinced uh, that actually wearing a mask around your chin uh, or perhaps hanging it on, on your arm uh, is the way to go. Um, so please let's not blame all the young people. Um, and I guess, you know, actually, um, if you do and you are worried about something, uh, the uniforms are normally quite obvious. So feel free to contact the school because I know our heads are really um, making sure that young people are uh, aware of that. Now, just to finish as well, um, actually, um, we are all hoping uh, that the 2nd of December we'll see uh, a lift, but as Helen says uh, in the end, none of us know. The only way that we will be able to do that is if the infection uh, and the rate of infection really declines, which is why uh, we all need to do our best over the next few weeks to try and make sure uh, that happens. Uh, and then uh, we'll be into December. Uh, and I guess, personally, I feel, uh, we need to be honest that any idea of uh, a kind of a Christmas season as we know it uh, is, is very, it's just not going to happen. I, I mean, I could be being cynical, but um, I think that's probably what we should all be uh, preparing ourselves for. Uh, but rest assured that the council is working really hard uh, to make sure that we've got some kind of Christmas program uh, put in place, whether it's an event, how we're going to support uh, our town centres. Uh, we're going to have uh, hopefully restrictions uh, permitting uh, a wonderful uh, enchanting, light, enchanting light show uh, up at Avery Hill Park, uh, which will be in set in the Winter Gardens uh, and around there, and that will be uh, incredible. The Winter Gardens, if you don't know, and I've never been to Kew, so uh, I don't know this either, is actually the second biggest glass house outside of Kew, so it's a massively uh, important historical building that will be really good uh, to get uh, as many Greenwich residents as possible, perhaps to uh, a part of the borough that they haven't uh, experienced or, or seen. Um, and we're hoping to do that, as well as our normal programme uh, of Christmas trees uh, around the borough uh, as well. Um, obviously, um, I guess um, we'll also be doing all we can to support our local businesses. Uh, and please do everything that you can uh, to shop locally uh, and support them, uh, because it's been a really, really difficult uh, year for people. So uh, I'll leave it there. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, for joining. Uh, we will have another session uh, coming up very soon. Uh, we hope it's been useful. Uh, stay safe, uh, look after each other, and catch up soon. Thank you.